Hi, I'm going to talk about our paper, Double Block Length Hash Function for Minimal Memory Size. I'm Yusuke Kenaito, and this is the joint work with Yu Sasaki and Takeshi Sugawara. This is a summary of our results. Our goal is to provide block cipher based or thicker block cipher based double block length hash functions with minimal memory size. The memory size determines the overall hardware cost in lightweight implementation, and existing double block length schemes do not achieve the minimum memory size. So we propose new double block length hashing modes, XXNI and XXI, that have the minimum memory size. Regarding security, XXNI achieves optimal indefinable security and XXI achieves optimal collision security. And we compare hardware performances of our hashing scheme and the existing double block length hash function Romulus H, which is a finalist of the ongoing NIST lightweight cryptography standardization process. As a result, our scheme reduces 30% of hardware cost. Okay, so firstly, I explain the background of our research. Lightweight cryptography has been a topic in cryptography so for more than a decade. The motivation is to design cryptographic algorithms that achieve efficient performances by design to provide data security for resource constrained devices. Lightweight includes a lot of meanings such as uh, small memory size, power consumption, latency, and so on. And the target of this talk is memory size. Memory size determines the overall hardware cost in lightweight implementation. So by reducing our memory size, the hardware cost is reduced. And in lightweight cryptography, uh, sharing a printing for multiple functionalities is important because thanks to the common printing, one can reduce the total memory size. In the ongoing NIST lightweight cryptography standardization process, authenticated encryption and hash functions are considered. And now 4 out of 10 finalists support both authenticated encryption and hash function. Uh, NIST selected different types of printing due to design diversity. Design of hash functions is a topic of this talk. A hash function takes an arbitrary length input string and returns a fixed length string such as these bit lengths. Hash functions are designed so that these security notions are satisfied and designed by using these primitives. Block cipher, ticker block cipher, and permutation. In the NIST standardization process, four finalists support hash function, and three finalists are permutation-based schemes, and the other is the Twitter block cipher-based scheme. And this talk focuses on block cipher and Twitter block cipher-based construction. So block cipher is a family of permutations in text by uh, keys. And block cipher is used mainly used as a Components of symmetric key algorithms such as authenticated encryption and message authentication code. And in these settings, a block cipher a key is random and secret. So when designing a block cipher based hash function, the input and the output become public, so using the decryption function of the block cipher. The primitive security is easily broken, that is given the output z, then using the decrease function, one can easily uh, find the input x and m. So to avoid such attacks using the decryption function, the input is feed forward to the output like this figure, uh, this is a debit mode. And the feed forward operations uh, ensure collision recent up to two to half of n carry complexity in the ideal cipher model. Uh, n is the block size. And then uh, variable input length hash function 
uh, can be obtained by combining a compression function with the domain extender such as Mark Dangard. Uh, this is a Mark Dangard with Davis Mayer mode. On the other hand, the output length of block ciphers are commonly less than or equal to 128 bits, such as the AES and Skinny. And, but the output lengths of block ciphers are too short, so when using the 128-bit block cipher, uh, the security is ensured up to only 2 to uh, 64 uh, carry complexity due to the burst attack. So hash functions such as SHA2 and SHA3 are designed so that the output lengths are greater than or equal to uh, 224. So double block length design is a useful approach to solve the problem, where the out length is extended by calling a block cipher twice. Uh, so this figure is one of the double block length schemes, hero set schemes, where a block cipher is called the upper and lower part. And so the out length become the 2n bit. And so far, several uh, double block length schemes have been proposed, such as Hirose's scheme, Tandem DM, RSDM, and so on. And these schemes achieve collision rate sound up to 2 to n carry complexity, which is uh, optimal collision security for 2 n bit output length. And then, uh, variable input length, double block length hash function can be obtained by combining a double block length scheme with uh, domain extenders uh, such as Mark Dangard. Regarding memory size of double block length hash functions, due to the input length of the underlying block cipher, the minimum size is at least n plus k bits, and n is a block size and k is a key size. On the other hand, existing double block length hash functions need at least 2n plus k bit memory. And existing double block length hash functions are mainly categorized into these two types. The first type uses a feed forward operation like this figure. Uh, this type needs a memory to keep one output block of n bits while calculating the other n bit output block. So, for example, uh, this double block length scheme performs the upper and lower part parallel. So, uh, this double block length scheme keeps this uh, n-bit output block when calculating the upper part. The upper part requires 2n plus k-bit memory. On the other hand, uh, the other type, uh, this type does not use uh, feed forward operation. Uh, although the feed forward operation is used to avoid attacks using a degradation function, uh, Uzen Stam shows that by iterating the double block length uh, scheme, like this figure, uh, the resultant scheme becomes an optimal collision resistant hash function. So by removing the feed forward operation, the memory size is improved to uh, 2n plus k bits. This figure summarized existing double block length schemes. And this line shows the memory size. As you can see, none of existing schemes do not achieve the memory size n plus k bit. So we solve the open problem. We first explain a basic component of our double block length hash functions, xx. This figure shows the xx structure. Idea behind our scheme are that a 2n bit internal state is updated by sequentially processing our block cipher. And our memory for the underlying block cipher is commonly used to keep the internal state. As a result, xx achieves the minimum memory size. Uh, note that uh, although these uh, key inputs must be required to calculate the next uh, internal state values, but uh, key input can be recovered by inversing the key schedule of the underlying block cipher. So 
this key does not require a memory to keep these uh, key inputs. For security, uh, we design an XXPath hash function so that these requirements are satisfied. These are the requirements of this standardization process. However, XX itself is not a secure function because one can easily calculate a preimage from uh, the uh, output or by using a degradation function of the block cipher. So we use the idea by using some that is we ensure uh, these requirements by iterating the XX scheme. This is the main construction of our result XXNI. XXNI is designed so that it is indifferentiable secure, which ensures security against the length extension attack, as well as collision resistance. Regarding the structure, XXNI has the iterative structure of XXNI scheme, but uh, iterative hash function is vulnerable to a length extension attack, which breaks the indifferentiability. So to avoid the length extension attack, we make use of the nested structure in this part. By the iterated uh, nested structure, we can ensure that XXNY is indifferentiable secure up to uh, this security level. So when using 128-bit block cipher, uh, XXNY achieves the indifferentiable security up to uh, this security level, which satisfies the requirements of our goal. The next scheme is XXI. The motivation of designing XXI is to improve the efficiency of XXNI. Since several applications do not require security against length extension attack, we can remove the nested part, which is introduced to resist the length extension attack. So, by iterating the XX uh, function, like this figure, we can ensure collision security up to the, this security level. Since the nested part is removed, XXI is faster than XXNI by two block cipher calls. So far, I explained our hash functions using this XX. Uh, function, but the security holds even when inserting linear functions pi1 and pi2 in this in this part. Uh, motivation of the modification is to remove the inverse of the key schedule. So if the key schedule of the underlying block cipher is linear, then by setting the key schedule to these linear operations, we can reuse the results of the key schedule to update the internal state, thereby saving the cost of the inverse of the key schedule. This slide compares our double block length hash functions with using scheme. As shown in this line, the memory sizes of our hash functions are smaller than the existing scheme. This slide shows hardware performance evaluations of our hash functions. We compare our hash functions with Romulus Edge, which is the finalist of this standardization process. Romulus Edge is a combination of MDPH mode and skinny. So we use the same primitive uh, for our hash functions. And we implemented these schemes with the same design policy. Since the memory sizes of our modes are smaller than MDP8 mode by 20 bit, our hash function reduces 30% of hardware cost. This is the conclusion of my talk. We propose two double program hash functions, XXNI, XXI, that achieve minimum memory size and optimal security. XXNI is infrastructure secure up to this security level, and XXI is collision resistant up to this security level. So when using 128-bit block cipher such as Skinny, XXNY and XXI satisfy uh, this security level, uh, which is required by NIST standardization process. We finally compared our hash functions with Romulus H and our hash function reduces 30% of hardware cost. This is the end of my talk.
Thank you very much.